the state of Michigan remains under a stay-at-home order that now runs through the end of the month. Will that be enough? Is it too much? And with the virus hitting the African-American community with such ferocity, is there a way to stop it? Today is Sunday, April 12th, 2020, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, welcome to Flashpoint. Happy Easter on a very unusual Easter Sunday. Our lives have been consumed for a month now by the coronavirus, and sadly, a month isn't enough. On Thursday, the governor made official what we all assumed was coming, the extension of her stay-home order through the end of April. We ran past two horrible milestones this week, past the 20,000 mark on cases in Michigan, and past the 1,000 mark of people who've died. The numbers fly at us every day. They can get lost in a blizzard of math, but this much is clear and pretty easy to understand. The coronavirus is right now the number one cause of death in America, surpassing cancer and heart disease, at least for now. This morning, we're going to talk about the horrendous toll COVID-19 has taken in Detroit, but we're going to start at the state level with Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist. He's up first this morning on Flashpoint. All right, let's start with the stay at home directive, which seems clear, and yet we still seem to be struggling with the concepts of essential and non-essential. Very happy to have with us this morning, the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Michigan, Garland Gilchrist. Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, thanks so much for the time this morning. Great to have you with us and happy Easter. Thank you, Devin. Happy Easter to you, and it's always good to be back here on Flashpoint. Yeah, thanks. Um, let's. I, I want to start with this. Uh, I, I, I kind of raised this question with the governor at our town hall meeting about a week and a half ago. She was steadfast that night in her answer, and I think uh, remains so. But I think a lot of people are wondering, isn't there some way to keep the smallest slivers of economy running without endangering anybody? Uh, landscaping and golf courses are the two that everybody talks about the most, but there's other spaces I'm sure as well aren't there some places where our uh, understanding of essential might be more related to what might be common sense rather than just a uh, firm one-size-fits-all rule well the issue here is that COVID-19 is a virus that spreads very easily person to person and the truth is um, uh, you know any non-essential activity can lead to that spread and that when we get into that definition of essential it really is about what is protecting and sustaining life and yes, I agree that playing golf is fun, but it is not um, something that is really protecting life during this critical moment. We need people to stay home because even the, the, the smallest amount of uh, unnecessary interaction with people could spread the virus, could leave it on a surface or things of that nature. So we have to be as careful as possible. And yes, we have taken a different approach here in Michigan and other states. It's one of the reasons why um, I think the federal government has been looking to us and from FEMA, for example, calling us a national model, because we have decided that the people in our public health are what comes first. We can restart the economy. We can reimagine our services, but that can only happen if our people are healthy and if they are confident fully when they go out. We don't want people to have to choose between, well, can I go to this place but not that place? Uh, we want people to be clear and, and confident and safe and not have anxiety. So that's why we're taking this measure. And if we act aggressively now, we hopefully can be able to do it for a shorter amount of time to get back to our new normal. I, I think when all of this started, we started to wonder how long people could could do this without starting to crack a little bit. And I think we're starting to see some of those cracks, uh, especially uh, if, you're, if you're following social media. We've got some people, I guess, who are trying to put together a drive into Lansing uh, tomorrow to show protests. But this is, uh, are, are you starting to worry, though, about the resolve, especially outstate, where the problems haven't been like they have been uh, in the city of Detroit? or in Southeast Michigan? I think resiliency is a defining characteristic of the people of Michigan. So I believe that we're gonna do, uh, the majority of people are gonna do what they need to do to keep themselves and their families and their communities safe. But yeah, this is difficult. We haven't dealt with anything like this in our lifetimes. And it's traumatizing for a lot of people. I mean, I, I unfortunately am up to 15 friends um, who have passed away from COVID-19 and have a number of other friends and family members wow. who have been infected or in the hospital. But the truth is, it's not safe for us to just assume that the virus is not in any part of our state. While we do have smaller numbers of confirmed cases in certain communities and in certain counties, particularly up north and in the Upper Peninsula, the virus could be everywhere. But we don't know that because we do not yet have the, enough testing capacity to definitively answer that question. 
That is why we've been working so hard to secure more tests from the federal government and procure more testing kits from private sector vendors so that we can test more people to truly know what the community spread is. And until we have done that, it's frankly not safe to make that kind of determination. And it would be irresponsible to make policy choices um, based on not having clear evidence. Uh, those of us who live in Southeast Michigan are more likely, of course, to know people who have uh, either had the, uh, the virus or have passed away from it. I, the total you just mentioned in your own personal life is, is, is heartbreaking. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we're seeing and its particular reach into the African-American community. I think a lot of people are start, can understand why. Uh, you, you know, le lesser access to health care over the years, uh, chronic problems that may have existed that were untreated, all those kind of things. But what can we do about it? What kind of uh, inroads can we make uh, into the African-American community to try to help mitigate it now that we understand that's happening? Well, yes, Devin, as a black Detroiter, it breaks my heart to see how this uh, disease has been ravaging our community in particular. We make up 14% of the population, black people in the state of Michigan, yet thus far we are accounting for 40% of the people yeah. who have passed away. So clearly something is going on that has made this virus more lethal for our communities. And so that is why uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer this week announced uh, the task force on racial disparities with the coronavirus and that I am chairing. And I'll be leading that group with a set of public health professionals, medical professionals, community leaders, activists, but also just people who are connected and influential and want to make uh, good things happen for our people. What we're going to look in is, yes, those social determinants of health that have led to negative health outcomes for black people and for poor people and for people of color in the city and across the state. This is certainly a contributing factor. But we also need to dive into what is it particularly about this pandemic? Is it that we need to better understand how social distancing um, can work in these communities and so that we can perhaps talk about it better or think about it in a more intelligent and insightful way? There are all sorts of recommendations that we need to make because, you know, the truth is the way that the black community and, and many other communities deal with times of crisis is by coming together. And what's dangerous here is that that coming together is exactly what is so dangerous about the spread of COVID-19. So it has taken that away yeah, from us. Yeah. It leads to the, to the anxiety that this disease produces. And that's why we have to work hard. We're going to come up with solutions quickly. We're going to implement them quickly. And I believe we'll lay the foundation for a bigger conversation about health disparities once this pandemic is over. Um, we, we, I, back to, the, uh, to who's working and who's not working, what's essential, what's not, not essential. I, I think uh, some people would applaud the governor's purity on not trying to pick favorites. But I get emails every day from people people who are mystified that the lottery remains a favorite of, or somehow essential, that people are still waiting in lines at stores to buy lottery tickets, and that goes against the grain of uh, what we're trying to do with the rest of our efforts. Yeah, I mean, I think it's tough. And one of the things you will see that we have changed in the updated stay home, stay safe order is we try to provide more guidance and clarification, particularly around activities within stores, because, yes, there are stores that sell items that are important and essential to sustaining life. They they sell water, they sell uh, toilet paper, they sell those sorts of things, but they sell things that may be not essential as well. So we try to provide some guidance about um, literally sort of blocking off areas of the store that are not selling essential items um, and making sure then that people are practicing safe and strict social distancing measures um, for people who are coming into the store waiting there. Uh, we don't want people to get sick just because they had to go out to get food. And so we're working with our the, the store owners and the business owners that are, are running these critical businesses to try to make sure that they're making good choices and being smart. Uh, uh, lastly, a question that I know you are not going to love, um, but there's a, a, obviously a, a ton of talk about uh, uh, Governor Whitmer being on the short list for the vice president. In fact, uh, not guessing work, uh, Joe Biden said she's on the short list as to be to be the vice presidential candidate. I, and that leaves us with the question of are you ready to be the governor of Michigan? Well, I'm proud to serve alongside Gretchen Whitmer. She's been a fantastic and decisive leader. And I think this coronavirus pandemic has made that clear and made that plain for people in Michigan, as well as people across the country. Um, and certainly we are both proud to support Vice President Biden. And, and Gretchen Whitmer is a great public servant. And however she chooses to serve, I'm proud to serve alongside her now. And, and, and if that means that she um, uh, is in a different office and I have the opportunity to serve the people of Michigan, I will do so humbly uh, and, and do so in a way that will uh, make the state of Michigan proud. Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist, really appreciate your time. Uh, continued hard work, obviously, but also stay safe. Thanks so much and happy Easter.
Thank you, Devin. Happy Easter. Stay home and stay safe, everyone. We can save lives. You bet. All right, we'll zoom in to the city of Detroit uh, in its efforts against coronavirus next on Flash.